Good afternoon. Hopefully you're having a fantastic week so far. It's hump day. You're watching a replay of a live show that I've just done on uh, Facebook. And we're talking about venturing outside of your comfort zone and why everything that you really, really want and aspire for in life is found there outside your comfort zone. So if you're watching a replay, just type in the number two. That just gets us to know where exactly we are in our content creation. And I see a few people are tuning in. Emma, thank you so much um, for joining us live. Robert, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I see uh, we've got LA Williams. What's happening, brother? It's been a minute. Hopefully everything is fantastic for you in 2018 right there. And um, talking of LA Williams, he's one guy who's totally, um, you know, going outside of his comfort zone um, you know, I, I speak this out of love. Um, he's visually impaired, but he's not letting that stop him from being, doing, and having. And uh, we've been working together in trying to create um, a podcast for him. So, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, you might not have, um, you know, all the things that you might want in your life, but that shouldn't stop you. Just venture a little outside your comfort zone, and that's where you find, you know, all the, the happiness you'd ever want. I see Andrew Matthews and Scott Woodrow have just tuned in. Thank you so much, guys. While everybody else is getting relaxed and, uh, you know, getting acquainted to each other, you know, on this show, I just really want to reiterate that I actually believe that your business should be profitable and enjoyable. And I believe that, um, you know, at the end of the day, if you are out there, you know, working really, really hard and creating for and relating to your audience, you should definitely, um, you know, be making a profit and actually enjoying, um, you know, your business. That's why, um, you know, without a doubt, every single day at, at 2 p.m. AEST, we sit around here and I just teach you part of the simple four-step system that I created, um, which is designed to make you package brand and market your services so that you have a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable i see look moroni has just churned in brother i'm loving your live videos these days you know they've got something going on it, it just keeps people entertained and that's a perfect example of somebody who's venturing way out of his comfort zone um you know in order to be to and have a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable and in the process creating and relating to an audience um you know that actually is going to be loving what he does if he stays consistent so basically the reason why i do this is because i happen to lead a team um you know of digital marketing experts um, you know, that are out there helping other businesses to grow essentially through digital marketing strategies. And what we do basically is help you build systems in and around your business so that your business operates on autopilot. And those that are in Australia, I've just recently created a platform where you can actually join and communicate with other, um, you know, business owners um, that are in Australia. It's called the Australian Business Online Directory. So if you haven't had a chance to join on there, have a look at it or just type in the words DIR. I'll send you a link so that you can sample out and see what everybody else is doing. I see Mike is in the house. Thank you so much, my man. And Chris Agua. Oh, my love is in the house. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so this is exactly what it is. It's a family. We, we've known each other. We've become comfortable, um, you know, together and we should not be we should definitely not be complacent and we definitely should um you know always be pushing each other to grow um always pushing each other to um you know become the better version of ourselves i was looking at the date today it's the 31st of january okay you know what that means that means the first year of i mean the first <laughs> <laughs> the first month of January has gone. The, the first month of 2018 has gone. You know, um, when, when the year started, everybody had uh, resolutions. Everybody wanted to be somebody they were not the previous year. But have you taken the steps, um, you know, to do exactly that? Have you grown from the person you were last year to the person you are exactly today? Have you gone past your fears? Have you learned something new? Have you shipped or have you put a new product on the market that never existed? I don't think a lot of people have done that. That's only because we really are 
sitting in our comfort zone. And unless, you know, you're living on a trust fund that has a trust fund looking after it, you really need to get out of your comfort zone if you want to make a decent living. This is what is now happening these days, you know what I mean? Every second person has some sort of a business, has some sort of a um, an outlet for them to put out their gift. The more you don't show up, the more you stay complacent, the more you stay in your, um, you know, a, a zone of, of, of stasis, you know, the homeostasis, the people that you know, um, you know, the, 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 the country that you know. I've spoken to people that have never left Victoria as, as, as a state in Australia, and it puzzles me, you know. Um, they're still in their comfort zone. They're still friends with people they were friends with in high school and kindergarten even. You know, what do you learn from people that are still in the same position they were five years down the line, six years down the line, etc., etc.? You know, do you know what I mean? Karen, thank you so much for tuning in. And Nicole, thank you so much for tuning in, guys. So today I really want to drop you out of your comfort zone. I really want to, I want you to see that you're probably missing out on, you know, um, the greatness that was meant to be yours, you're probably missing out on the finances that you were meant to have, all because you are not doing what you're supposed to be doing, all the most of who you're supposed to be. Because the more you are not in, you, the more you are in the comfort zone, the more you are ordinary. And guess what? Ordinary does not get paid. All right? Ordinary gets by. Ordinary is. You and me, ordinary is boring. And that's the reason why our audience want people that go out of the way. That's the reason why you sit down and you, you, you go to a concert because somebody in the Foo Fighters is playing for two hours nonstop. All right? Because people are, are putting out the best gifts out there. You know, and what are you doing as a person to venture outside of that comfort zone? Because you're not growing if you're not putting stuff out there. You know, at the end of the day, you know, we, we, we love routine as a, um, you know, as a people. We are creatures of habit. And even this two o'clock video, it's, it's now a routine that just didn't start on its own. It was a lot of, you know, self reflection it was a lot of you know self-confidence that goes into not knowing what to expect every single day and 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 then you know probably running out of things to say and then sometimes we find ourselves in 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 a in a roller coaster doing the same thing and you're doing the same thing over and over and over again and it becomes safe and it becomes predictable and then that's where boring comes in and then with the audience that we have now that has an insatiable, um, you know, content need, guess what they do? They go on and move to the next person. And, and you might think you've got it good, but at the end of the day, you're actually missing out on, 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 you know, opportunities that could have come out if you ventured to do something different or just tested yourself and moved further from where you are to at least closer to your goals. I see TD Mukushi is in the house. What's going on, brother? Nicole, thank you so much for tuning in. All right. So, you know, I, I live in Melbourne. We we are in the most livable city in the world. And you Sydney people, you, you know, you're jealous of us. Um, when the tram comes in, it shows up at the same time. Do you know what I mean? Every morning. And we know everything is fine. The moment the train delays by about two seconds, it makes the news. Do you know what I mean? So people have no mercy when it comes to anything going besides, um, you know, routine or <laughs> anything going besides what is, what is, what is, what is normal. And Emma says, ah, no way. Sydney shines with water and light. <laughs> I think, I think, I think, um, you know, the statistics, check the statistics and do the math. I think we've been, we've been, um, yeah, we've been the most livable city for, for ages now. You know, the more you are complacent, the more you 
you don't grow as a person. The more you are complacent, the more you are, you become less interesting, um, you know, to your audience. And because people like to do business with those they know, like, and trust. And your likability, your credibility comes in from doing things they don't see Auntie Sally doing. Because what you need to be getting um, from people is their attention. And attention is an overrated commodity right now on the internet. I really am appreciative, um, you know, for you guys watching me right now. There's three, you know, three, is it three million or three billion? Three billion other people that you could be watching that are signed into Facebook right now, you know? But it's because maybe we're doing something different here. I'm making you feel different. I'm making you look at things differently. Or I'm even egging you a little bit to go outside your, your comfort zone. Because if you settle into the grove and, and you just get your work done without ruffling any feathers and you live smoothly and short, you become unlikable because... Some people like living on the edge. Some people really like seeing what they could have been through other people. Does that ever cross your mind? And that's the reason why we are fans of other people. That's the reason why we follow people that do things that don't seem normal. If you're just ordinary, if you're in your comfort zone, well, grand opening, grand closing. Do something different with your work, the way you blog, the way you interact with people, the way you actually are as a person. If you stay in your comfort zone, you become normal and normal is boring. And Scott says, if you do what you've always done, you you get what you've always gotten. Well, absolutely. I didn't want my, my show to go in with, with a cliche to say, get out of your comfort zone so that you get different results. But I really want to show you that right now we are fighting in the newsfeed to get people's attention. And if you are not doing anything different, if you are not doing anything that warrants somebody's attention or time or, you know, and notice, then you are wasting time. Why play a game when you know you're going to fail anyway? Or why you why play a game when you're not playing it to win? So that's all I'm just saying. If you look at what you're doing every single day, well, how can you change um, you know, the, the, the way you write? How can you change the way you introduce yourself? How can you change the way you interact with your audience? When When there's a bit of a change, people will notice. And when people notice you've you you've gotten a yet another lease in, in 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 their you know in their news feed all right um Karen says living to other people's expectations instead of being who you were born to be well absolutely and Chris says it's really trusting in your own creativity because if I've seen something um if I copy what Chris has done and I expect my audience to think that it's new and it's it's new and improved or it's new and different. They would always go back to the person that has the original stuff, you know? So your comfort zone is probably killing your business right now. All right? You, you, you might, when was the last time you picked up the phone to call an old client? Even if somebody who is, um, you know, doing well, paying on time, and, and and he's referring clients to you. When was the last time you just picked up the phone to ring them up and say, hey, listen, Sally, um, I just wanted to say hi. Because we we just want things to be okay. You know, everybody can be a star when the competition is is, is weak. Everybody can be a star when, when, when the clients are loyal. Everybody can be a star when the economy is running well. But... Like what TD Mukushi says, your comfort zone is killing your business. Absolutely. Because what you think is normal, the out of sight, out of mind. If your client is not thinking about you when your services come to play, then that means somebody else has been luring them and, 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 and giving them information that you could have been doing. And Chris says, if you are in a comfort zone, no growth is happening. Well, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And particularly for us people as entrepreneurs, comfort is your enemy, guys. Like what everybody else is saying in the newsfeed there, like T.D. Mugushi. Comfort is your enemy. You know, if things are not changing, then we're not growing. And like what Chris is saying, if we and our businesses aren't growing, then we quickly become irrelevant. You know? 
we quickly become irrelevant. And out of sight, out of mind. You know, some people, some people wonder why other people's businesses go past the two-year mark, three-year mark, four-year mark. It's because they do things differently. All right? If you're just going to sit down and do like things by the book, guess what? Your customers are waiting for somebody to wow them. And if you're not going to be doing that, guess who else is doing it on the other side? Your competition. All right? Karen says 100,000% agree. The comfort zone is safe, but it doesn't stay comfortable. The pleasure of living has to be greater than the pain of staying. Absolutely. Can you type in the comments, how many new customers do you have that you have gotten between the period of 1st of January to the period of, um, you know, 31st, which is today? Because if you're just dealing with your old customers, what that means is they're probably not, you know, um, introducing you to new people because they, 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 they find it hard for them to leave you but they don't want to be embarrassed because they don't think the new people will be excited by your services. If you don't constantly um, are surprising your customers or if you are not constantly you jumping out of your comfort zone and doing things differently, it will be difficult. Emma, yes, I did. For some weird reason, I saw a post of yours on, uh, on Quora. And I was really, really surprised. And, you know, it, it just got me thinking. That also is you totally getting out of your, your comfort zone. So I really was impressed by that. And that's the reason why I've invited you to also repurpose your content on, um, you know, on, on, on the, um, the Abbott blog. And for those that are in Australia, if you're running a business and you haven't uh, listed on the Australian Business Online Directory, at least make this your getting out of your comfort zone thing and trying something new, okay? Because, you know, for you to grow both personally and professional, professionally, it really, really, really um, requires for you to step out of your comfort zone. And even if it's just a slight, you know, move. And now Emma has just realized that somebody is, is, is seeing her work somewhere else when she didn't expect it to be, to, to be seen. All right. So doing things that, you know, make you uncomfortable can actually teach you a little bit more about yourself. All right. Your personality and what your full potential is. How are you going to know, um, you know, you, you, your good, um, storyteller or how are you going to know your good uh, person on video if you never try? Because we, we, all these stories that we tell ourselves in our heads, all right, it's, it's, it's because excuses sound best to the person who's saying them, you know, and for you to really, really step out of the comfort zone, just take a deep dive and figure out, are you the person who is supposed to be providing this service, you know? Because the one thing that's stunting your growth is you're doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. So like I said earlier on, when you're calling a potential client, you know, maybe, maybe start slowly. Because calling a major CEO of a major corporation can be daunting, you know. But doing so, you know, you, you open yourself up to business opportunities that you never knew or never thought were possible. Because maybe that CEO knows somebody who could use your services. You know, everybody's waiting for that big break. You know, in, in Hollywood, we always hear about those big break stories. But it's people that would have worked thousands and thousands and thousands of hours behind the scenes up until opportunity presents itself. And it always goes to those people that are always looking for it. No one is going to come and knock on your house's door and say, hey, TD, hey, Emma, hey, um, Karen, you know, yes, Karen, uh, Karen, excuses sound best to the person who's saying them. Because if I, if, if you tell me I can't go on video when I do video every single day, I'm just like, ah, uh, maybe you're lazy, you know, and guess where comfort zones come from? You create them. You know, you know that statement where people say, oh, Oprah has the same hours as you. Jay-Z has the same hours as you. Um, um, you know, whoever, uh, Elon Musk has the same hours as you. I beg to differ with that statement. Because what if Oprah wakes up one hour earlier than me every single day? 
And guess what happens? If she wakes up one hour earlier than me every single day, after a week, that's seven hours. Yeah? And then after a month, that's 28. Is that right? Can you type in if I'm getting it right? After a month, that's 28 hours that she has ahead of me. So that means Oprah has yet another extra day. You know why? Because she's venturing out of her comfort zone. So you create opportunities for yourself and just don't wait, you know, just because, oh, they were born with talent. Nobody was born with talent. People are working, putting in the work. They're reading the books. They're, you know, doing the face-to-face -face networking. They're doing the videos like I'm doing every single day and putting out their stories so that people can understand that Rome was not built in a day. People are just waiting for somebody to come, like I always say, knock on your house's door or on your office and say, hey, listen, here is a pregnant woman. She's nine, eight months old. Just make sure she delivers the baby and now you're a dad. It doesn't work like that. You know, it doesn't work like that. Figure out how many more sales conversions can you actually make or how many more people would you be able to put on your list or in your books if you just did one more thing in your day-to-day -day activities? One more phone call. Wake up maybe one hour earlier. Talk to one more person. How many more clients would you have at the end of the day? Or maybe do one more interview. Just start small. And rather than attempting to make a hundred you know, um, you know, cold calls in one day. How about just making a single call and make it useful? And before you know it, it becomes one, two, and it compounds. Exactly. What does Emma say? Compound interest. It compounds. And they say it's the eighth wonder of the world. So like I really gave you a specific example. Oprah, yes, has a lot more hours than you because maybe she wakes up a bit earlier than you do. And then her hours are, uh, accumulate. And the more they accumulate, so if she is gaining a day every single month, that means after seven months, she's got an extra week ahead of you. Just because she's getting out of her comfort zone. So maybe try doing something different to your routine. If you cross your arms like this, left over right, why don't you try crossing... I did this. <laughs> I can't get out of my own comfort zone. Okay, <laughs> right over left. You know, just try and change things a little bit and see how people can perceive it. And some people would um, give you, you know, advice and, and you grow like that because that's how you grow. You, you, you're here to live, you're here to learn and you're here to contribute. You can only contribute and be fulfilled when you are definitely way out of your comfort zone. But maybe you are afraid. Maybe it's fear that's crippling your success or, um, you know, your, 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 your progress. Can you just type in the comments there, your biggest fear? Can you just type in your biggest fear? My biggest fear is being ignored. Like, I don't know if you've noticed that my biggest fear is being ignored. When I, when I came to Australia, um, this, is, this is quite a vulnerable moment for me right now. When I came to Australia, I knew nobody. Um, I came here, it was... Just me and I think an extra hundred dollars and a backpack full of hopes and dreams. Do you know what I mean? I was alone. I had no friends and, um, you know, having grown up in a place where, um, you know, community is really, really big. When I came here, nobody knew me. I was living in the city that's the size of a box and nobody knew my name. And that was really, really painful. You know, I want you to type in what your biggest fear is while I tell you my, my story here. Um, I really wanted to belong, you know what I mean? I really wanted to be accepted and I, I figured that, you know, probably having something unique or some sort of unique talent or expertise was, was like the way to go. But I had no clue what, what it really was that I needed to do. And me being prosper was not good enough for, for people because um, what was unique about me, I had to totally get out of my comfort zone in order for, for, for people to accept me. Please type in what your biggest fear is while I'm telling you uh, what my biggest fear is. I, my biggest fear is to be, to be, to be alone, is to be 
um, you know, and what, what do they call it? To be, um, yes, a fear of lack of connection. That's, that is my, my biggest fear right there. You know, even at the jobs that I went to and I was working at, everybody was just cliquey, you know. I used to smoke back then. That was seven years ago. Um, and on my smoke break, nobody would even come and even ask for a lighter. You know what I mean? Small things like that. And um, everybody just seemed to know each other. You know, they would they would go out for drinks together. Nobody would invite me. And that left me spending weekends by myself, going to lunch by myself. That was really, really painful. I, I thought I smelt. I would double scrub every time in the shower just so that I'm not stinking, brush my teeth, etc., etc. But it was it was just, you know, playing up in my head. But I knew I had to do something. So I tried to join, you know, some online groups and, you know, doing all those, um, you know, meetups. And um, I'll just really, really end up sitting by myself, you know. And, 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 and you know, I mean, <laughs> I'm good with people, man. Um, I'm really good with people. T.D. Mukushi says biggest fear, um, biggest fear is failing to afford my child a childhood as comfortable as mine was or even better. Wow. That is also probably one of those things, but yeah, I'm, 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 I've got the fear of being alone. And, um, you know, I, I started learning and figuring out that the market pays you in attention depending on what value you bring to the marketplace. So I was anticipating that people would come and join me, but I was offering nothing in return. So I started looking for skills, um, you know, online and, and everything that I found Either it needed a skill or very long hours for me to learn what it was, a lot of money and a lot of efforts, none of which I had, you know. And, um, I, you know, by that time, I couldn't afford a place of my own, so I had a roommate that I was sitting, um, that I was living with. And um, this is maybe where my big break came in. You know, they suggested that um, they were looking for, you know, male models, um, that, you know, could, um, what do you call it? That, that, that were needed in, in, in at, at their work. And I didn't know a first thing about modeling and, you know, I didn't want to end up doing things that would embarrass me, um, et cetera, et cetera, because that also could have been a big fear being in front of people. So I took to YouTube and I started learning and I thought, you know what, if I really want to get out of this fear, I should actually start learning this thing because that was the easiest thing I could do with no skills. Um, you know, as soon as I got into the country and I, you know, I kept, I kept learning and learning the pauses on online, watching how people did it, etc., etc. And I, I took a course to do it and it took me about eight weeks. And, um, yeah, I don't know if you've seen any of my photos. Now I pause, I, you know, I take my own photos and it looks like they, you know, they, they've been taken by a, a professional. It's because I went off of my comfort zone and then all of that culminated in bringing in a lot of confidence. And now I don't need to look for people to hang out with. People are tripping, stumbling and falling to be a friend of mine. And I'm busy trying to build my business. So if you don't get outside of your comfort zone, none of the goals, ambitions or, or you know, money, um, relationships that you're looking for will ever, ever, ever knock on your house's door and say, hey, listen, we're ready for us to, for you to just put us in a bag and put us in there. Because at the end of your comfort zone, that's where all the hopes, the dreams live. And a lot of people just die with nothing to show for it. I think it's Les Brown. He mentions that the, 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 the richest place in the world is the graveyard. Therein lies all the hopes, the dreams, books and movies that were never put out there just because some guy decided not to go outside of his comfort zone. And guess what? He ain't comfortable anymore. I don't think it's comfortable in a cushion, in, in, in a coffin, no matter how they pad that thing. So look at where you are. Look at look at who you 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 want to be and start becoming that person because that is not going to come on its own. You know? All of these things that we 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 look at in envy or in owl, it's 10,000 hours behind the scenes somebody putting in the work, getting outside their comfort zone. And guess what? 
you only get to see 30 minutes. You don't get to see the, the hustle and the cold face that happens behind the scenes in order for me to sustain this energy, sustain this show, sustain everything that comes along with my brand. It's all coming outside the comfort zone. If I was just going to be like, oh, I'm just going to Netflix and chill. You know, people know me already. I'm just going to relax. It would be grand opening, grand closing. And guess what? Every level has its own devil. It's like the, 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 the video games. The higher you go, the faster the things come. And they're eating you and chomping on you. So you better be getting outside your comfort zone. ASAP. You know? So you might, I don't know about you, but maybe you've got a trust fund that has got a trust fund. So you don't have to worry about working hard. But as you become increasingly more comfortable with discomfort, you'll find that you've turned your old discomfort into a new comfort zone. And that's why I was saying every level has its own devil. And when this happens, step outside of it again, because you're an expert in this, right? There's always going to be something that is going to pull you back. And don't let it be. You are stronger than that. And with a little time, you train yourself, you become better in that level. And you find yourself getting closer and closer to your goals as you develop new comfort zones along the way. So expand it. You know, at the edge of your comfort zone. That's where the whole good stuff lives around. Just like a diamond. You had a cut. You have to be cut for you to shine. And guess what happens with the diamond? Millions and millions and millions and millions of years being compressed up until it goes, I'm out of here. And then it shines and it becomes the most expensive, you know, stone we probably have admired as, as a person. Now, look, says massive hassle. Sometimes it's those fears, laziness, and the thoughts you get before doing Facebook lives. Well, I do get them, but then guess what? Guess what I do? I know what I'm doing is, is, is needed. All right. Thank you so much. I'm also having to go. Uh, today, I just really thought it's the end of the first month of 2018. What have you done? What have you achieved? Have you moved the needle at least? All right, stop being lazy and complacent because complacent is, is not you. You were born to lead. You were born to do a whole lot more than you are actually doing right now. Show us your best side. Bye for now.